Stitch Cutie. I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and this is the final tutorial for the July block for the U Troop. Let me show you the pattern. What we're going to do, we're done with all the stitching. It's time now to trim our block to nine and a half inches. So there are two ways that you can do it. One, you can use your ruler and measure out the nine and a half or you can do my little trick which is to turn your light pad on. I have my applique glass on top of it. And what I'm gonna do, so simple, put my placement guide down. I line up my little guy, my little Uncle Sam. Now, if you wanna put a little tape in place, you can, to just kinda like hold this guy in place. But what I'm gonna do is trace my trim lines. And that, to me, is easier because I know my trim line on my pattern are correct and then I know I'm gonna get it nice and straight and I don't have to do any math <laughs> that's why I like to do it so I'm gonna take my friction pin and what I'm gonna do is line my ruler up just along the edge of my outer trim line and then my my ruler lines I'm gonna line it up on the other two lines so see I know Let's see if it's at one, it should be at 10 and a half here to equal nine and a half, right? So I know that I'm gonna have a perfect block. So I just hold my ruler in place, trace this line. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on all four sides. So I'm just gonna line this little guy up. Oop, and sorry, my head's gonna peek in because I wanna make sure I get all the way to the edge. There we go. Sorry about that, y'all. There's the back of my hair today. <laughs> so, do the line here. And I'm just going to come down here and do this side line. And the same thing. See, I'm using my lines on my ruler to line up perfect with the line I already drew. And my lines are going to be perfect up here, and it's going to be perfect on the side. So that I know I have a nice square nine and a half inch block. And I'm just gonna turn it one turn to get this final line. See, just right, right here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And then make sure it's straight down there. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do after I finish this line, easy peasy. I'm just gonna get my little cutting mat this cutting mat fits right on top of my applique glass, which thrills me to no end. And once you get it in place, it's a little grippy, so it doesn't wiggle around. I'm gonna untape this because I don't wanna cut my pattern, right? I wanna keep my pattern nice for my binder. So I'm gonna put that over here. And now all I'm gonna do are those lines that I trimmed. See how I have a perfectly square block? We're just gonna trim it. Can it get any easier? I love it. Now, of course, the other method is, is to measure out your nine and a half inches for, you know, from the center, make sure you have four and a quarter all the way around. You can do that. This to me is my little cheat way that I like to do it. So do the way, the method that you feel most accurate and most comfortable with, right? So I cut that line. We're gonna turn it and cut this line. Again, when I'm doing this, this cut, I'm still lining my lines up, right? So that I stay square. Oop, just get this guy perfect in line. There we go. Because if I mess up here, then when I put my borders on, right? I'm not gonna have perfect borders. And I want perfect borders, so I have a perfect quilt. That's what I want, and I bet that's what you want too. So a cut right here. And now this final little cut. Oop. All right. Doot, doot, doot. Oh, look at that, perfect. See 11, and then it's at one and a half here, so I get my nine and a half. That is a perfectly square block. Does that not just delight you? It delights me. Okay, let's take a look at it, because once we trim it, the block looks totally different. Look at that. Oh my gosh, let me turn my light pad off for so you can see it. That's awesome. So this is totally ready for borders. So let's talk about our borders and get them ready. So I'm gonna pull my steady Betty out because you've seen in the past month's videos if you watched them, if you watched them, I like to starch my borders, right? So let me just show you. Where's my starch? Here it is. 
I do the same amount of starch on my background fabric as I'm going to do on my borders. I'm just a little like flip across. And yes, when you starch, the fabric shrinks up. So you want to starch it before you cut it. So just go across, iron it dry. Now there's all kinds of levels of starch that you can do. You can, you know, go really crazy and like do it in the bathtub with starch and like make it like drip dry and have it like paper. I don't quite go that extreme. I mean, I have on some quilts, but you know, I just like enough starch to make it easy to work with. So let's go on and spray. Doot, 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 doot. And I put my hand here because I've noticed that when I spray my spray starch, I'm spraying on my light pad. And I'm getting a little buildup of that starch and I don't want that doesn't hurt the light pad. I can just wipe it off, but you know, why make that step? There we go. Iron this guy dry. And then in just a second, so you iron with me, iron together. It's like we're sewing together. So when these are iron dry, we'll just take a glimpse at the pattern and remember what size we cut them to. And then I'll show you how to cut them. I'll show you how to cut one long and one short. Well, I might as well cut them all at one time and show you. And then what we'll do in this video, I'm going to show you some tricks for sewing the borders on. Not really tricks, pretty much the easiest way to do it, I think. So now I need to cut again, right? So I'm done ironing. Let's move my little steady Betty. Take a, a little glimpse at our cutting instructions. So our two long ones go to one and a half by 11 and a half. So that's my pink, my hot pink and my tomato, tomato red. So what I'm going to do is just stack these right? And let me tell you how easy it is. So we're going to go to one and a half by 11 and a half. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll do my 11 and a half. So what I'm going to do is go from one to 12 and a half. Now there are two ways that you can cut. You can have two rulers, one ruler that is your length this way, and then a ruler that you sit there and cut against. Or if you're going to use the same cutting mat, the whole project, you can go off the cutting mat. So again, I'm going to 11 and a half, but I'm starting at the one. So it's really then 12 and a half, right? Just cause I don't want to cut at the zero. I'm going to cut. Oop. See, I'm cutting on the one. So it's one plus the 11 and a half. There we go. So now I have my perfect length. Now I need to trim this get my trash out of the way. Now I need to trim it to one and a half in width. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to line this little guy up. I want to keep them as straight as I can. And I know this bottom edge and top edge. Oh, how convenient that my mat is this width. <laughs> Couldn't plan that if I tried. What I'm going to do is put my ruler over here. I'm going to make sure I have at least one and a half inches in width, right? And I'm going to use my line at the bottom to line up and then it lines up at the top. So what I'm going to do is just cut some of this fray off, right? To give myself one nice clean edge, right? So I'm going to move this out of the way. Now, as they say, fabric is never like more perfect together in the same size than when it's cut together. So I'm just gonna be really careful when I pick this guy up and flip it. We're gonna line him up straight. And then what I'm gonna do is just go over one and a half inches. And you can make sure you're one and a half inches because one, I'm at oh, an inch and a half in width on my mat and also on my ruler. See how everything is lined up perfectly? I love it. Ah, that is gonna be a perfect, perfect strip. And again, we give you way more fabric than you need. And if you're a true apple care, you're not gonna throw this away because you never know when you need like little berries or hearts or something fun. So keep your scraps that are too small to keep, keep them. <laughs> okay, maybe these you can throw away. Okay, so now we have that. Now we just need to do the same thing for our short guys. So that is the Wedgwood Blue and then the Lime. And they are one and a half by nine and a half. So I'm just gonna line them up and let's do our nine and a half inch cut. So I'm just gonna make sure one plus nine and a half is 10 and a half, right? So I'm gonna make sure I'm covering past both of those lines. So we'll cut at 10 and a half. There we go. And we'll cut down here at the one. 
And again, there's more than one way to cut. So if you have a different method that you prefer, do that, right? Do the method that you're happiest with. Now we're just gonna come right here. We're gonna line this guy up on a line straight and then straight up here. So that way I know, I just need to make sure I have at least an inch and a half width. I'm gonna come all the way close to the edge. Keep my ruler nice and lined up on the top and bottom. You're not gonna line up an edge here because right, we haven't trimmed that line yet. So it's not a perfect line. So you're only looking at the lines across the top and the bottom right now. And we're gonna trim right here. There we go. Now, same thing. We're just gonna very carefully take this, boop, flip your guy. And now I'm gonna line it up. It's lined up now perfect on a line right here, the top and the bottom. So all I do is go an inch and a half over and the line on my mat and my ruler all are perfectly in alignment. Boop. See, bottom, left, top, and then this right line right here, all in alignment for one and a half. So again, you got a lot of scrap, right? This is all scrap, almost a whole second set of borders. So these two pieces are totally ready. Now let's take a look at how we're gonna iron or sew them on, excuse me. So let me move my scraps out of the way. So what we're gonna do, just take a look at your instructions and what does it want us to do? We want the Wedgwood, the Wedgwood blue on the left. Then we want the lime on the right. So we're gonna sew those two on first, right? Every month we alternate the long and short ones on the top and bottom to left and right. Then we are going to, after we sew those two on, we're gonna sew the tomato on top, and then we're gonna sew this hot pink on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do right now is simply take this over to my sewing machine, get them nice and lined up, and I'm gonna sew those. I'm gonna come back to show you how I press the, set the seam and then open it up. And we'll do the same thing with the top and bottom. Okay, so now I'm back and you can see I've sewn the seam on either side. So now I need to put my steady Betty back out. You don't wanna press on top of your cutting mat. All right, and I always like to press on my steady Betty and you'll see it's just really a dream to work on. So I'm gonna set my seams first. There we go. Set this. All right, and then I just simply take my hand, finger press that over. And you want your, um, your seam allowance to go toward your border, away from your applique block. There we go. Press that. Same thing on this side, give it a little finger press. There we go. It's so easy, I love it. I feel so accomplished when I make this every month. <laughs> I love it. And like we talked about before, we're gonna sew the pink now on the bottom. We're just gonna take that, flip it up into place. We're gonna have the tomato red on the top. Take that, flip it into place. And now we're gonna go back to our sewing machine like we did with these two seams, do a quarter inch seam on the top and bottom. And I'll be back to show you pressing those open. Okay, so now I've done my seam at the top, my seam at the bottom. And the same thing we did for the edges, we're just gonna set our seams. Oops and set our seam right here. And then just finger press. Again, the seam allowance goes toward your borders. Oh my gosh, look at this perfect block. I love it. Let's take a look this way. Right here, finger press. Oh my goodness. Is this not the cutest, Joel? All right, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. I love it. Do you love it? This makes me really, really happy. So let's just put our pattern back together and put it in our binder. And look, does that not look exactly alike? We did good, didn't we? Aren't you proud of yourself? Pat yourself on the back because you made the most adorable July block. And next up is August. I can't wait to make that. I forgot what's on August, but I'm sure it's super cute. Like all, the whole quilt is super cute. So as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much for being a member of the YouTube Block of the Month. If you're not a member and you want to make this with us, come on, visit stitchthequilting.com and join today. Happy stitching, everybody.